Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ericsson TV, Curtis here with Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hey, Curtis. Hey, everybody. So, Lauren, uh, previous episode was very good about people about uh, you know taking advice about not to panic. Maybe they took that a little too far. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, this episode is talking about the history of, uh, of previous market declines. Right. And um, so since the Great Depression, or almost in the last 100 years that we've been tracking uh, you know, stock market indexes, so this is specifically the U.S. Uh, S&P 500 index I'm going to talk about in okay. a moment. Um, so this correction that we have been in, and as a, as the date of this taping, uh, we're not you know it seems like some some of it's coming back a little bit, but uh, from a percentage point of view, from the top of the peak of the market to where it is at today, this would this would not qualify as a bear market, but more as a correction. Okay. Okay, if that makes sense, a like ten percent or, or greater. Right. And um, I did did a little study of uh, history. So in the past roughly hundred years, the S and P five hundred has now declined uh, by ten percent or greater. Uh, 89 times. Okay. okay. So pretty common. So, uh, so yeah, so just before we go into further, yeah, 89 times, that's a lot. <laughs> that's right. many, many, many declines of 10% or more. Right. And that's basically about, you know, once every, a little over once every year. It happens. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. pretty common. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing, and this is where, where I think people get, you know, first of all, the, the, the news media makes it sound like this time it's different. It's, it's, it's <laughs> right. this, this, you know, the world is ending or something really <laughs> bad is happening. When, because gas prices are low. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. All prices are low. I mean, so if you look at if you look at the uh, if you look at the past history, um, every time there's been a ten percent correction, it's usually some different reason. It's, there's not. Right. There's not. There's, it's always a random reason. It's it's random. You know, data in the market or whatever. Um, but the interesting thing is 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 from that top to bottom, uh, on those ten percent or greater corrections. It's only taken on average about 100, 111 days for the market to come back to that that previous high again. So, mm -hmm. so the recovery can often come fast and furious. Um, right. and, and I've seen elements of this one already starting that we've had some really big updates, especially right. in the international market. So, I guess the takeaway is we don't know what pa past history is going to repeat itself. We don't know what's causing it, exactly why we're in this correction market. The takeaway, though, is is that they're very common. They happen frequently, mm -hmm. and and again, we talked about last week. Do not panic. This is right. actually the time that you do not want to lock in any kind of losses, uh, but you do want to perhaps if you have some conservative fixed income, maybe use that as an opportunity to do some rebalancing. That's right. Yeah. What's your take on that? Yeah, the, the, the I thought that was a very interesting average. That on average, it takes 111 days for it to reach its previous peak. You know the the. The, there's just absolute, which means that sometimes it's happening much faster than right. that, if oh, exactly. that was the average. Right. So, and then sometimes obviously it takes much, much longer. With with the stock markets, the thing to always remember is that if there's going to be a recession, which we have no idea, right. the stock market will go down before the recession. Right. But then it will start going back up long before the recession ends. Right. But sometimes there's no recession. Right. Sometimes <laughs> nothing happens and it just turns out to be panic for panic's sake. Or maybe it just turns out to be that a lot of people, because of really low interest rates, put their money in stocks when normally they should right. probably have just kept it in something conservative. You know, so there's just no way to know any of this stuff. So that's why, as an investor, you always need to come up with a plan where you have already thought about the fact that these declines are going to happen and how you're going to react in advance so you're not trying to figure it out each time. Right. And this is the end of this episode, but, uh, and I think people forget this, I think seasoned investors or experienced investors understand this conceptually greater than more of the inexperienced investors, but what causes the, the so typically if you look at almost any time frame, uh, the stock market has provided somewhere around a 9 or 10% rate of return long term. Right. But the reason that you're able to enjoy those great returns is you need to have this volatility yes. to, to, to have the risk associated with to get the returns. And so, mm -hmm. kind of in a perverse way, when I look at these corrections, um, I say, okay, that means the volatility is back up again. We're probably going to enjoy some decent returns in the future at some point. We don't know when, but we're going to get rewarded for this volatility. <laughs> yep, that's it's strange, but that's how it works. All right, well, thank you for watching this episode of Ericsson TV, and we'll see you next time. Bye now. See you next time.